Belize is one of the smallest countries in the world, but with its prime location, it is a paradise for travelers, especially those from the United States. This small country hosted nearly 2 million visitors in 2019, even though its population is just under 400,000. Much of the economy revolves around this tourism, and while you'll likely see a wonderful place from the outside where you can deep sea fish, scuba dive, snorkel, go cave tubing, parasailing, visit Mayan ruins, see wildlife, pristine beaches, and more, life for Belizeans is not quite as extravagant. Formerly British Honduras, Belize was granted independence in just 1981. This blessing of freedom has come with some curse, many times showing up in governmental issues. This, paired with other issues of the area, and humanity in general, shows a great need for a great God. Despite all these problems here and everywhere else, God has a way of working. God is working in Belize. As a child growing up in Belize, even within the church, the church was a lot more rigid when it came to teachings of the Bible. Um, but more and more people have digressed from that. And so there was a, up until the mid 80s, uh, late 80s, our country were known to be about 85 to 90% Christian. And that has changed drastically from then to now. The politics have changed a lot. And so there have been corruption, not only with politicians, but even with people in the system. And so you find that over time that things have changed the landscape and to make matters worse is that people have become uh, individualistic and caring, thinking only about themselves. And so it has changed the way things operate now in Belize where uh, at one point we were more concerned about our neighbors but now there is less of that because everyone is trying to, to put on a good front, trying to do the best they can for themselves. And so that's contributed whereby we're, we're not helping as much as we can. And so that has left many people struggling. Um, and um, it's rather unfortunate, but it's contributed to a lot of where we are today. The different governments that have been in power uh, have thrived to different levels uh, with corruption. Um, there's, there's about a 4% conviction rate for all crimes in the country. Um, sometimes uh, police and other officials are not well educated uh, because the educational system only goes so far. Uh, and so trying to um, report a crime or um, provide help for a victim or a survivor of uh, a, a sexual assault or uh, domestic violence. There's a lot of challenges with that. Uh, there's a lot of challenges uh, regarding the social network for people who need help and are very desperate and and uh, want to live a healthier life. Um, those are the things that, that come to my mind. The government have the resources. The government is able to access the resources. But too many times what I saw was that the monies were not being channeled in the right way because it's being channeled based on public political preferences and and even in terms of what community gets assistance would be which minister is the strongest in the cabinet that would be able to persuade the, the powers that be or you know to, for his area to get to be benefiting from it. One of the things I recognized was when leaving the government was what the church can do and because we don't go based on political connections. We don't go based on not even denomination. We try to help people in general. And so I can see, I've been able to see that the church has been able to impact the community more positively than the government can, even though the government have the resources. And the, 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 the change and the impact is normally longer lasting as well. 
and um, because it comes from a genuine heart, from Christians having the heart of God. CDF, which means the Child Development Foundation, is a Christian social justice organization. And we are here to provide a community-based response to the eradication of human trafficking, child abuse, and domestic violence. Our main focus here is eradicating human trafficking. And human trafficking is often referred to as modern-day slavery. But in the Caribbean and in Central America, we are not just dealing with the immediate aftermath of slavery that is happening now in terms of human trafficking, but also some of the leftover trauma issues that have been caused by the historical slavery that was practiced here in Central America and in the Caribbean, as well as some of our colonial past. And a lot of those issues are more mental and psychosocial and sometimes psychological as well, how they affected people's agency and their willingness to stand up for themselves and to push past op oppression and even to stand against people who are oppressing them. There are so many problems, so many problems, but I think um, for me, poverty is the one that um, touches my heart the most because that is such a dream killer. It crushes the soul and I feel like a lot of people are trapped in that cycle and they don't know how to get out. I've seen, um, you know, poverty is, is a problem, not just for Belize, but, you know, around the world. Uh, I grew up in poverty, so I, I have personally witnessed um, the effects of that. And seeing it play out, I feel like um, the poverty is such a tricky one because um, a lot of people hide it very well. You know, um, especially in an urban setting, I have seen over and over, for example, teams coming down from the States because they want to reach those who are living in poor villages and stuff. And those in the urban areas are often neglected because they don't live in a grass hut. So there's so much more that we could do, I believe, in this country to change things around, but it has to start with us opening up our eyes to what is right in front of us, instead of, um, I think, dreaming of running away to a better country, because you know everybody talks about um, the land of opportunity. People feel like if they can leave and go to another country, for example, the US, that life will be better there. But I think running away from it doesn't help. So if everybody runs away from Belize, then we won't have um, a future. A lot of youths now growing without, without uh, both parents at home, uh, which has had severe repercussions on us as a society, where crime rate is very high, um, drugs. And so the opportunities for young men is limited. Uh, even girls, uh, but um, the men are, are the forgotten ones, uh, opportunities for them are very limited. And so um, when Pathlight um, expanded to Belize City, our goal was to reach as much youths in that community as possible to create the opportunity, opportunities for them. And uh, so reaching as much used to give them opportunities other than education um, is is lacking and so yeah uh, that's the area that i love working in and that's the area that belize needs to improve on belize like any other country has many problems but there is hope there is a god who is working everywhere and this God is working in Belize. Firstly, I want for you to know that Belize is the most amazing place like in all the world. Uh, Belize has some of the natural wonders still. One of the, the biggest, I think, pulls for Belize is how it has protected its biodiversity and just we have so much of the natural things that are here that are still protected. Coming from Jamaica, we don't have a lot of protection for our biodiversity. We are improving, but Belize is the world leader in, in this. We have several protected areas in Belize that are, it, 
and I want to see that translated in how we protect the lives of young people and the opportunities that we provide for them because the, the, the desire is here. We just need to provide the services and to get people motivated to fight for, for it in the same way. Because of the system we have in Path Life where we'll check on you, we'll check on your family. We, because we see you as family once you join us, we do anything and everything within law and reason to help you to come up and change your life. And so this young man, um, he wanted to give up and just, um, just throw away his life with choices that weren't something that we accepted. But um, fast forward to two years ago, he saw me and he said, Mr. Dion, he told me I give my, my life to Christ and man, mm. I just want to apologize to you for all the troubles <laughs> I gave you, but I wish I had gotten what you were telling me before, but thank you for not giving up on me. And so, yeah, stories like that abound in belief, not only through path light, but yeah. through hope for life. Through CDF, through yeah. um, all different ministries here in Belize, through the help and support of mission uh, missionaries and also friends uh, living abroad. Yes, God is definitely at work in Belize. Perhaps for me, one of the ways that I can say I see God most visibly working is I came here 22 years ago. And 22 years ago, when I first saw that there were issues relating to the protection of children and trauma issues, and I would bring that up in communities, communities were very resistant. People were in denial. No, no, that's not happening. No, no, that's not happening here. But now there is openness. Um, people are willing to, to talk about the issue. We are seeing people seeking help in much bigger and numbers than we have seen before. And I think this is part of God opening the doors and really impressing on people's heart that there, there is a bigger life beyond this, that there is hope beyond this. And they have also seen other persons recover, which is one of the things that keeps me going. Because we have a lot of sad stories, but we also have a lot of really amazing success stories. We have worked with children who were in abusive situations, who received counseling, who went on to finish high school, graduated successfully from school and became the first persons in their families to go to university and just really see the family dynamics transform when education created bigger economic opportunities and children having a very different future from the ones their parents had. That is something that continues to amaze us and to remind us that what we're doing is helping people to get to that next step and that God is doing it. So there are so many stories of how God provided for us, the opportunities He created for us that we would have never even dreamed of. Um, so I, I think I just look at us and you see that how God has answered the power of God's goodness, the love um, of God displayed in our lives. And because of that, we have been able to help other people as well. I see that every day I'm surrounded by people who give selflessly their time, their money, they love, they serve tirelessly. I think that is such a blessing that we are positioned in this time, uh, in this season where we, we see God's handprints all over, not just our lives, but the people around us. Like many pastors, we want to see our community change. We want to see change in our community. I believe we have a, a perfect opportunity to be able to see that done in this community. The opportunity is there, and I want to be a part of that. I believe God placed us here for a purpose, and it was not just to keep the doors of the church open, but to see change. I've worked with the government before, and I gave many years of my life to that and I've seen how it could have, but because of all the things that comes along with it, it you didn't quite get the benefit. So when I left the government to become full-time pastor, um, one of the things I believe fully is that God wanted us to begin to plant seeds in the hearts of people, and it would germinate and it would take on from there. So I want to see my community transformed. I, I want to see my country transformed, and I believe that it can happen by the grace of God. Belize is filled with so much potential. Um, there is so much that God is 
wanting to do God is doing in this country but what is lacking here is not um, uh, people that people don't know the gospel or they haven't heard of Jesus they need discipleship they need love they need to they need to see that being lived out um, and we need to create that space I believe um, we need to move from that being just religious and actually putting into practice what we know to be true so I think that's what um, I would share it's time to put into practice what we know to be true to be the actual hands and feet of Jesus here in our country.